uh, sell lithium polymer battery. So we continued looking and we found this hobby parts uh, JCX M6 gyro and it seemed to meet all of our needs. As you can see from the, uh, the, the uh, description, the pins come out the ends much like the, uh, the Guardian does. It's nice and flat, very easy to mount on the model and it's nice and lightweight. The Guardian has got a little bit of a, a case around it for added weight, but it's also got a pin here for the uh, wire to come out of it. That just it was added weight. So the, the uh, hobby parts seem to really meet our needs well. Okay, uh, the next one is the Park Zone uh, AS3X receiver. This is an all in integrated receiver. Uh, you can buy this <coughs> as a uh, single unit. You've got two servos on board, and you can also add extra servos here and here. What this does is it has the gyro on board, but it's a very, very small unit, not conducive to a larger unit like this because uh, it just doesn't have enough power. Um, on the servos, ended up crashing a unit with one of these because we overpowered the, uh, the model on a C motor. And then we developed uh, this motor, model right here, to use conventional servos. Okay, the idea of this was that we would take standard model airplane technology and uh, we would use that for our testing platform to do some initial evaluation of the gyros. So, as you see, I built a foamy, put the uh, unit on it, and uh, yes, that's snow. We fly in snow here. We also fly at night, but that's another story. <coughs> the foamies were real good for testing, and uh, this one, this particular unit had the Hobby King uh, gyro on it, and it worked real good, but there were uh, glitches in the uh, software or something, and it ended up uh, shredding itself through a, um, a rail at the, our indoor flying facility and uh, clipped the wings completely off, destroyed it. We ended up having trouble with that same hobby thing in another airplane. Uh, it caused crashes, but it did not destroy the airplane. We decided that was just too much, not worth uh, continuing the investigation. Here you can see a picture of the uh, same foamy flying and right there is the gyro. The problem with it is, is all the, the way the wire is attached to it, it just doesn't clean up aerodynamically well. And it's not going to stuff into a small fuselage easily because of that, uh, all those wires coming out. So somebody's going to unsolder parts and do this, and that's just beyond the scope of what this entire uh, discussion is about. We're trying to make something that's easy for an A or B divisioner to do even a steam visioner who has no electronics experience. So, the next model that we put it into, that hobby game, is this uh, quick sale from Fancy Ball. This is the one that we had second drop with. It uh, caused glitches, and we ended up crashing it into the field over here. Now, recognize our pavilion? This was done at our field. Okay, this is, uh, as we got testing, we went through the uh, Eagle Tree Guardian and tried it out, uh, but we found out that there were some, uh, it's a really good gyro, and we really liked it, but because this particular unit has a single cell lithium polymer in it to, to power it, the Eagle Tree Guardian did not accept that as our power. It got glitchy and had problems. We discovered this on the bench. So we set it aside and continued looking for another gyro. That's when we came up with the Hobby Parts um, MCX J6. And here you can see I'm doing some initial bench testing to see how it works. And I found out that there was a little issue with the way that I wanted to mount it. And then the uh, gyro was intended to lay flat across the, uh, the wings of the uh, model. Kind of like if this were the PC board, it would be laying flat like this. Well, that's not a real good way for me to mount this. I don't want to mount it upright. So, after looking at it, I said, okay, if this is the <coughs> elevator for pitch, when I turn that upright like this, that same direction now becomes the yaw. When I take this direction right here, and this is the yaw, when I turn it up like that, that becomes pitch. So I just crossed the controls, crossed them on the servos, everything worked fine. As soon as I start yawing the unit, the rudder starts wiggling in the opposite direction, counteract it. As soon as I start pitching it, it's the elevator's controlling it and it, it counteracts that.
can see the picture of the uh, unit mounted on the unit, and I'm passing it around through the uh, through the audience. Okay, we uh, <coughs> we did 14 test flights. Uh, five of those were uh, of the test flights were with the unit uh, as it. Yeah, uh, five of the units the. Uh, it was, the unit was active and the result was a hands-off boost. This particular unit right here is a real handful to control. You watched it fly at Air 53, it pitched over, did a nice loop about 10 feet above the uh, timing pool and then took off and ended up doing another loop at about uh, 500 feet. So it's a real handful to fly. The first four flights of this we ended up uh, testing it without the gyro on it just to make sure that it still exhibited this problem and I was ready for it. So it pitched over, pulled it up, I had a smaller motor in it so I was able to control it and not have it loop around. But I could tell it was ready to go in again, just as the motor burned out. So we found that, yep, this model is a real problem with boost. So we uh, then put the gyro on, tried it out, and uh, sure enough, it straightened up right away. It became a hands-off boost. It was just a night and day difference. Uh, in order to show that this was not just me doing this, we gave it to another pilot, Brian Guzik. He flew it. He and there he is. He's waving. He was able to fly it, um, basically hands off also, except uh, he was making very minor corrections for things like the wind, because we were launching at an angle. He wanted it to come up a little bit more vertical. So he was pulling a little bit more air in it, or as it was starting to drift off with, uh, with the wind, he was using a little bit of rudder to bring it back in line. But they were corrections for what the weather was doing to it, because it was still flying in a straight line. He just wanted to change that line as it was flying up. So the, the, uh, the gyro actually gave him the added control to be able to do that much more easily without having to worry about uh, over control problems. The uh, hobby parts unit was selected, though, uh, to be suitable for this, and uh, as, as you see, passing it around, it fits right on our unit. <coughs> In conclusion, we found it is possible to buy a commercially available gyro unit for stabilization of the RCRGs and get straight up hands-off boost. Such a system at $34 is quite affordable to the average modeler and can be put on just about any model. <coughs> this right here is the CRCRG. Putting it on a uh, standard S8 model that you would use a D or an E model motor would be nothing. Uh, smaller RCRGs can be uh, built also and uh, you know, work with that. Large models <coughs> can use the Eagle Tree Guardian So the Eagle Tree Guardian was just found to be unsuitable. So as an addendum to this, uh, to prove that how, how this is going to change the state of the art of uh, the hobby, this has been developed as a product for North Coast Rocketry. This is a product we're calling up Daddy's Girl. It is going to use the AS3X receiver on board. This particular, this particular model has the AS3X in here. The battery and uh, boost absolutely straight up. With this on, you can then disable the uh, gyro and put it into flight mode and fly thermals for about five minutes, all you know, real nice. And we've done this how many times, Matt? I did it ten times, so I'm not a good pilot. So. Yeah. I mean, he, he calls himself hand, hand handed. <laughs> all thumbs. Yeah. And uh, so he's, he's able to get five minutes off of it, I'm able to get five minutes off of it. This is, a good, this is a good test model and it's proving that this is going to advance the state of the art of uh, RC boost gliders and RCRGs. Okay, any questions? Uh, are you going to demo this thing? Pardon? Are you going to demo this thing? Absolutely, tomorrow. Are you demo it tomorrow? Or about what time? Probably right after we uh, fly our scale model sometime. It'll be early, early afternoon. We close up at lunch, so it's going to have to be uh, probably it won't be early afternoon, late afternoon, yeah, by ten or eleven. That's it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, it's, it's you're, are you using all three axes for stabilization, or just two? This particular model only uses two, but we could add all three axes into it if the model was set up. Is it? Um, we're going to be able.
point foot, or just at the time we scroll and hold? If you uh, want us to have the ailerons uh, in, in, in April, we could. So some of the more advanced SA models do have uh, ailerons, and they even have a flap around. So you could take this gyro and then hook it into your flap around, and or ailerons, and then control the, the roll, which would then stabilize even the third axis on this thing. This particular model only has rotor and elevator, same with this one. And it seems to work fine on, on this. One thing that you concerned about moving from uh, model aircraft to rockets on the boost is just uh, will the system respond fast enough uh, for the disturbance? Have you seen any issues with that with us? Yes, as a matter of fact, that was part of the, uh, the initial problem with the single axis gyro is the system moved too slow. So we ended up having to find the other, another gyro. And by the time we found another gyro, they had come out with three axis gyros, all based on uh, microcontrollers instead of the analog uh, circuitry built in, and they reacted a lot faster. And the servos also got better and better as, as time went on throughout this report. Um, because this was originally intended, I, I originally started this off to fly on my electric uh, high-performance gliders. And they are uh, getting high uh, boost or launch speeds, just like these SA gliders are. Uh, probably about half the speed of an SA glider, but uh, uh, still quite high. And they're having the exact same problems. They're pitching over and coming back on you. So when I added this, it did help stabilize it, but it just it wasn't quite fast enough. So that's why we look for another, uh, another alternative. And then we, uh, uh, like I said, I, I, in the report, I, I kind of assimilated these higher performance models to the SA models. And then I went and also saw that they were using uh, these single axis gyros on the rudder control of the discus launch, because on a discus launch, you're throwing this thing around in a circle like this, and it comes off your hand, and it tends to wiggle like this. Well, that's a lot of energy lost. So they put the gyro on to help stabilize that wiggle, and then it ends up going up more straight. So I said, hey, if it works for that, it can work for this. When you get out of boost, uh, you mentioned turning the gyro on, obviously, because it wants to kind of keep it oriented in a bad direction for, for gliding. Right. And have you given any kind of thought to whether you could reorient it electronically? They do reorient. As soon as you, as soon as you give your control, they, they reorient in the new position. They're not always trying to be up, upright like this. Those, thinking, those are those during, are, making it active during, during what? During what? During what? It, I have done that. Okay. Okay. There is an issue with uh, using a gyro in, in glide mode, in that uh, what happens is the gyro tends to dampen out all of the indicators and you get the thermals. Okay, but it does glide well. It flies like it's on rails, but it, you lose all of your indicators for thermals, which you get little twitches in, in the pitch and the roll, and, and you see that if you say, there's lift. You know, okay, I, it kicked me this way, I gotta go that way. So it'll stabilize you by potentially all the feedback that you need to go find you. To go find you live with it, right? Questions from the audience? Brian? Um, you said that this uh, model had some rather un unappealing pitch characteristics without the gyro. Um, are there any other approaches you could take uh, for adding electronics to make that, uh, make that to help that characteristic? And I, why, why is this preferable to having a uh, more aerodynamically balanced model? I probably could have gone through uh, several design iterations of this thing and, and tried to make it uh, much more preferable to, to boost, such as changing the orientation of the motor, moving the uh, motor, motor mount up and up and down, changing the dihedral in it. But now we're talking about three, four, five iterations of model, and each one I planted in the ground next to the firm. So um, I would rather put a gyro on. Yes, Chris. Plus, the gyro will allow you to survive the first boost. What's that? The gyro will allow you to survive the first boost. Yes. And if you if you survive your first boost, you have boosted your confidence a lot, now you're going to want to go for that second one. Next thing you know, you're on the S18. <laughs> yeah. Any others? Yeah. Thank you.
Thank you. Okay. Thank you.